Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jess, and I am joined today with Toby from the YouTube <laughs> from the YouTube channel Tibbies. Hello. And today we wanted to talk about academic research versus industry research. So both of us have done some academic research. I had been a grad student, and you're also a grad student. You did a PhD for one year, and I had spent the last year working in industry. And there is quite a difference <laughs> between the two. And so we just wanted to spend today discussing the difference between the two. So the first difference that I wanted to talk about was that, I mean, the biggest thing that I noticed when I started working at, um, the, for industry in the research department was that at five o'clock, I could go home <laughs> and I didn't have to keep working on the problem. Yeah. I, I guess in academia, maybe you know it's a little bit different and mm -hmm. that people often stay to any late hour of the night, but I mean, it also means that they could come in really late in the morning and no boss will yell at them. Like, I think you do have more freedom with your hours, um, which can be good, mm -hmm. but I don't know, maybe there's benefits to both. Like maybe working nine to five is better than, you know, having to spend all night working on something, but you also have a boss that's expecting you to be there. So. Yeah, that's true. And that, that's, that actually is a good point because for academic research, you're going in because you want to do the project or like it's, it's your project. Mm -hmm. So you're spending so much time on it because if you don't do it, it fails because yeah. it's your entire project. Yeah. Well, and that being said though, the nine to five thing, I actually think that successful grad students, successful PhD students, whatever, they actually do treat their work like a nine to five because they realize that there is a lot of work to get done before they have to write their thesis and a nine to five is a nice way to structure it. I think um, otherwise you could fall into the trap of having too much self freedom and just procrastinating for two years and mm. <laughs> finding yourself in a bit of a pickle. So. so I guess then there's a lot to learn from both of them and maybe as a PhD student you could take some tips from industry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could imagine it takes a lot of discipline. That being said, like some PhD students, they don't have this boss figure because like they're mm -hmm. maybe more in charge of themselves, but some PhD students have supervisors who act like their boss. You know, I mm -hmm. think it just depends how strict your supervisor is. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you could be lucky or unlucky there. Well, that's actually the next point that I was going to say is that um, from, from my perspective, and then you let me know what you think, when I was in industry, I felt like the project I was working on, it was like, it was our collective project. You know, we were all working on a product and if I didn't do the work, it was kind of like everyone got the hit because, yeah. and, but also the project wasn't mine. It was the company's project. Um, whereas when I was a student, the project, yeah, like I said, it was my project and if I didn't do it, mm. it's kind of, falls under the yeah. rug. I, I think that also depends, like in academia you can have projects that you're, it would only affect you if it failed. Uh, maybe maybe like theoretical projects would mm -hmm. be more like that, but some experimental projects like when I was in experimental physics, you know, something that you screw up, other people could be relying on you to have made them like some component that they're going to mm -hmm. use. So. I think that sense of responsibility, whilst it could be a lot less in academia, I don't think it is non-existent. Yeah, there. yeah. The other difference um, that I found was that when I was at the company, I really felt like the research work I was doing had a direct impact on like what the company was going to do because they gave me a project that they wanted done like immediately for the product yeah. that was coming out like in six months. And then when I was in academia, I felt like the professor was kind of just like, oh, let's see. This would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think to me, that's the big difference here is maybe the motivations of the work that you're doing. Um, whilst I don't really have much experience in industry, I feel like what you said, the motivation mm -hmm. is they want to do research to get useful outcomes. Mm -hmm. They want research that they can get applications from most of the time. 
Whereas while that's sometimes true in the academic world, I think it's more about they want to publish papers yeah. and the motivation is to do things that could be publishable. And I think that difference in the motivation leads to a lot of, I, I yeah. guess, differences in the work that you actually do. So like if something just needs to be publishable, then maybe like what you said, it doesn't actually matter if it's useful. It just, you could pick some low hanging fruit in a mm -hmm. way and show that some new thing works, but just have no intention of anyone ever using it. And you can publish it and that's fine. And you could just, I don't know, keep rolling like that. But in the industry, maybe you really want to maybe go after harder problems mm -hmm. in a way that they actually do need to be useful. So yeah, maybe in academia, there's room to go after just the easy problems as well as the hard ones. I also think that that leads to maybe in academia, you could publish something with kind of a little bit of a tenuous, I don't know, relationship. Like um, the results that you find from an experiment, maybe it can be sort of novel, um, but you just want to prove that it's publishable. But in industry, they really want to prove that it's definitely true because mm -hmm. if it was a fluke of the experiment or something, then that could cost the company a lot of money. Yeah. Like it, it could actually have a lot of flow on effects. So I think they care more about making sure things are really strong correlations. Yeah, and I remember um, just like in relation, I remember there was a guy in my masters that his professor had given him a project that the professor was just like well well let's see you know like let's see what happens mm. and his project ended up like not working and that was the result it was like this doesn't work yeah. <laughs> i mean that could be fine like yeah, yeah no and, and it is fine for from like the master's perspective but i think for him he really felt like you know he was sad because yeah. he was he wanted to have like a positive outcome or he wanted to sort of like help the world evolve or you know yeah. contribute to science which he did by showing it wasn't or it was just like let's try this methodology and the yeah. methodology didn't work yeah. so then you have to go back to square yeah, one. I, I understand like he probably has the motivations of what people get into science mm -hmm. for is, is wanting to discover something new and useful and great mm -hmm. and I think maybe it's useful to know that you can have those motivations and they'd be satisfied in industry because I think there's a bit of a perception that if you are like that, you're like a scientist and you want to make discoveries, you have to go into academia and mm -hmm. that, you know, people only go to industry if they want to make money or something. I think there's a bit of a perception like that, but yeah, I think there's lots of good research going on in mm -hmm. industry. and maybe even you know harder problems that are being solved than the ones in academia and you know you can have just as rigorous a scientific method in either of those so. yeah mm -hmm. i felt like i felt like maybe the professor <laughs> had set him up a little bit mm -hmm. like yeah because maybe. <laughs> you know he was just a master's student the professor gets him for six months yeah. and he's like well, I'm not gonna lose anything by having this free student try it. Yeah. Whereas in industry, I don't think that would ever happen because there wouldn't chase sort of such a risky mm. move. They wouldn't, it would be a very risky yeah. move to spend okay. their money and resources on mm. something like that. Yeah, it sort of reminds me of an experience I've had of doing some internships in academia mm -hmm. and Maybe you can tell me if this is what it would be like for an internship in industry, but I felt almost like I had a bit of a dummy project. Like it was a project that maybe the professor already knew the answer to, mm. and maybe students had done this exact same project year after year for them in the summer. But I guess for me, it was a way to, to learn skills and it was useful to me in that way. But I actually felt a bit demotivated in the sense that whatever answer I got at the end, people probably already knew and I wasn't actually doing anything useful. Um, I was just there to learn and to just do something. But maybe mm -hmm. in industry, you can't afford to have people just wasting time to learn. I don't know, you want even your interns to be contributing something. Yeah, well, I mean, even when I was working for a company after my second year of engineering, they still made me, I wasn't, just getting coffee or making yeah. photocopies. I was doing real, like, not engineering work, but I was doing like real programming mm. and 
um, spreadsheets and like actual work. So I think in industry, I don't think it's like in those movies where the intern just makes photocopies unless the intern is free. <laughs> but I would hope that most engineering internships aren't free. Mm. If you're doing that, <laughs> quit. I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah, that comment about, I don't know, doing internships for free, like you shouldn't do that. I, it comes to the topic of money, which I think is a difference you probably can't ignore between mm -hmm. academia and industry. I think it's probably true that you can make more money doing research for industry because well, like what I said, your results are useful mm -hmm. to some product or some business that is hopefully profitable. Um, where they're like in academia, I think the funding is just a lot different the way it works. You're applying for grants, you're hoping that you'll get grants to get this result just for the sake of it mm -hmm. or for the sake of publications which make everyone look good. And I think it's just funded in a very different way, um, which relates back to, I guess, different motivations but um, yeah I think people end up in industry because they realize you can do this cool research um, you know there's a few negatives about it but you can also get paid a lot more in yeah. these circumstances mm -hmm. and and that's the other thing is that if you're doing research in industry it's probably like it's mostly the higher paying mm -hmm. jobs because most um, research positions, at least at the company I was working in, um, and in most companies, I would say engineering companies in Europe, you have to have a PhD to mm. be a an researcher. Um, and so those are really the higher paying jobs at the company, unless yeah. you're in finance <laughs> or something. The other point that I was going to bring up is that I felt from just comparing my master's uh, research project, which was a year long, and my industry research project, which is a year long, I felt like my master's project was a lot more um, multidisciplinary. Like I did a little bit of experiments, I did a little bit of programming, of theory, all to kind of prove this concept from a lot of different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Whereas in industry, I felt like my project was very homogenous because everything is very structured. Like you have people doing thermoacoustics, doing modeling, doing all of the different yeah, You're not really already. a jack of all trades. There. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can attest to that or... Yeah, I, I guess just to me, it sort of makes sense that that would happen. Like, you know, if you really want to boil down efficiency, maybe it's better to have people mm -hmm. that just focus on one thing and they can do that thing well and pass it on to someone else. Yeah. It just seems maybe kind of efficient. But um, yeah, I, I guess my experience in the academic world is that people will often, you know, on these projects, whether they're masters, PhD, they'll want to get experience of all types of different things, mm -hmm. experiment, theory, even just for their own benefit, because going forwards, that will help them better get jobs and fit into places because they've got a broad range of skills. But I, I guess the university might care a bit more about that, about you gaining a broad range of skills to be a better human going mm -hmm. forwards. But maybe in the industry, they just want the result. They don't really care how well-rounded you are if you leave the company, but I don't know, I'm just speculating yeah. here. <laughs> maybe the projects in um, academia are riskier maybe yeah. and so because you're going into this new territory kind of if you come up to a new question you've got to just figure it out and maybe yeah. there is no expert in that field available yeah. to you anyway thank you so much for joining me thank you for having me and if you guys are curious we made another video on toby's channel called tibby's linked below so thank you so much for watching guys make sure to let us know if you agree or disagree with us and if you have your own experience to add in the comments below bye <laughs>